It looks absolutely adorable in there. Oh my God. guys, good morning, welcome to the vlog. I tell you, look at how chunky this girl is. This is actually a Jelly Brooks cream and she's not too far off from laying eggs and she's just absolutely gorgeous. I wanted to take you guys on a little journey today, not a journey out of BHB, but I'm actually gonna be getting some cool animals for the zoo next door. And one of the things that's so amazing about the zoo that we're about to open in a month and a half or whatever, is the fact that I could get all these animals that I really have always loved, but just haven't had the opportunity to do it. Now I have kind of an excuse, like, well, that'd be a great display over at the zoo. And some people have been reaching out to me and saying, hey, I have this really cool animal. I'd love for you to display it, and that's what's going on today. So today, I have someone showing up. They're gonna kind of donate a handful of these really cool animals I think are gonna make incredible displays, things I've really always loved and never actually owned, and then we're gonna build out the kind of enclosure for it that's gonna be kind of temporary for the next month or so, and then the final enclosure will be built when we open up the zoo itself, but we're definitely gonna have some fun, and I think they're gonna be here any minute. And they are here, of course. This is Zach, and this is Kayla, and guess what they brought me? Oh my gosh, let's take a look real quick. Oh my gosh, these things are so freaking cool. Oh, look at them, oh my <laughs> gosh. They're crazy, oh, they're crazy. They're oh my gosh, of course these are little white tree frogs. How amazing are these? They call them dumpy frogs as well because as they get bigger, they get kind of a kind of dumpy look to them. These guys are, um, yeah, take a look at this one. That's Mo. Like, this is Mo? Yeah. Mo, you are so <laughs> cute. Oh my gosh. And you guys, I told you, I have actually loved little dumpy frogs. I've actually caught these guys out in the wild in Australia, and uh, but I've never owned one and these are great zoo displays it's gonna be really cool to make this really amazing kind of foresty type look because these guys are tree frogs they climb all over the place so these are awesome you guys are awesome thank you so much hey, for no bringing problem these. we're is... really happy to bring them and uh, I'm sure they're gonna be well taken care yeah. of well you guys, and you guys are gonna come visit them right oh, oh absolutely yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. they're all named too they're yeah. all named so we'll go through and we'll look at each and every one and get their names okay all right so we spent a little bit of time just kind of tooling around playing with a bunch of animals having some fun it's really good to meet you guys thank Thank you guys so much, seriously, for the frogs. They're gonna be amazing. When you guys come to the zoo, you'll get a chance to know where these frogs came from. And uh, I'll try to remember the names. If I don't remember them, <laughs> I'll have them, to, and I'll put the names on the tank so you guys can see those. So thanks again for hanging out. You guys Thank are you, awesome. Thank you, Brian. It's been a great day. Oh, Absolutely. it's been awesome. It's cool, cool, cool. And we will definitely see them on the grand opening of the zoo. So before we get into this build, let's talk about these cute little monkeys. Well, they're not monkeys. They're actually frogs, but I think that they're cute little monkeys. Regardless, these guys are basically native to the northern and eastern part of Australia, and they can even go up into the New Guinea area. As adults, these guys get maybe four and a half or five inches. One of the things that's really cool about these guys, the setup is pretty simple. You know, they don't need any special lights. They basically needed 80, 81 degrees, maybe cooling off to the mid 70s at night. Pretty simple, they eat dusted crickets, roaches, all kinds of little bugs. You can even feed them superworms every now and then, wax worms. The one thing you definitely wanna make sure is you can definitely keep these communally. We're gonna have six of them together, but you wanna make sure that they're not too terribly different as far as the size goes because these guys will eat other frogs. They're definitely little munchers and as they get bigger they call them dumpy frogs because all of that stuff along their head actually starts to kind of droop and they look so cute. But regardless, these guys love to climb, hence the name tree frog. We're going to give them lots of options to climb all over the place and you definitely do want to miss these guys. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but you want to miss them with distilled water. So when we set up our misting systems at the Reptarium, they'll all be on distilled water. Regardless, let's go ahead and see what kind of materials we need to get this build done. So I'm gonna use one of the skyscrapers that ZooMed sent me. They're kind of perfect for like big tree type frogs. And, and these guys like height in cages. They don't need a lot of width and stuff like that, but they like to climb. So something as tall as a skyscraper is gonna work out good. Now, when we set up next door, we're gonna actually do a different backdrop. We're gonna probably do a little bit different branches and vines and stuff like that. Definitely gonna do bioactive soil next door for sure. But for now, certainly uh, Reptile Prime's fine blend of coconut will work out perfectly. You can buy that at reptileprime.com. Shameless plug. We're going to have some branches and stuff like that that we're going to put in here. Definitely some nice sturdy tree type plants with really sturdy limbs so that they can climb on this. And then we'll put some bromeliads in here just for color as well as they're going to like to climb on it. That's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. We'll just do a nice damp bedding of reptile prime. We'll get the climbing branches in here. We'll put some of the trees for foliage. That'll keep them happy, less stress. Plus they have lots of places and lots of surface area. You got to remember Remember, every time you go vertical in a cage, you're gaining a lot of surface area. So the more things they can climb on, the better. Not to mention this backdrop will be fine because they'll 
climb on that as well. When we do our backdrop to them, there'll be a lot of terraces and caves and stuff like that, so they'll have all kinds of room. But for now, this is gonna be fine. You gotta remember, we're only five or six weeks away from the reptarium opening up, and then these cages will all be done the way we really want them. Again, bioactive soils, misting system that's on distilled water. These guys don't really need much in the way of lighting, but we'll have nice ambiance lighting in there. So uh, let's go ahead and just put this thing together. And again, we'll dampen this up with distilled water. And not to keep, you know, kind of promoting my own product, but the thing that's nice about Reptile Prime is we remove the dust from it, so it really holds the humidity much better than most of the other coconut fiber, and it's really good. It's just super easy to clean, so that's probably the perfect dampness. Again, these guys want humidity, so you want to keep a good humidity up. You also want to mist them down probably two or three times a day. We'll probably have our misters go maybe four or five times a day when we're over at the Reptarium because we'll be on an automatic misting system, so it'll be really easy to just set it maybe every, you know, three hours or something like that. So anyways, let's get some plants in there. You know, and I've been so getting into this kind of landscaping thing with these natural terrariums. I don't know if it's being around Stewart at Universal Rock or just all the things we're doing. So it's really cool to see cages kind of come together. And again, you know, what I'm doing now is just kind of a real base. You know, this isn't what it's going to eventually look like, but this is going to be completely fine for now. And it still looks awesome. I mean, it's super, super cool. And uh, I think that it's neat to have these kind of naturalistic enclosures where, where, you know, you really can get into kind of the creative side and again this is pretty simple because I know I'm going to be redoing this whole thing I mean when I do this cages you won't see pots they'll literally be planted in stuff the bioactive soils and everything like that but this is going to be great for them right now again this gives them lots of areas to climb on here here all up here here we're going to put a couple bromeliads in here and then we're going to put a couple of twigs and branches then we're going to put some branches in here so they're going to have tons of surface area and they can all kind of find their own spot if that makes any sense so just a few more things and the decoration will be done Okay, so I think we're pretty much set. Again, we have the damp bedding, we have some bromeliads, we have a bunch of trees and limbs, we have some really nice strong foliage. Again, you gotta make sure that the foliage isn't poisonous to your animals. Uh, this should be a great area. This will be, it'll be, it'll be hard to even find these things because they're gonna hide so well in here. I think they're gonna absolutely love it. Once they're in there, I'll let them settle in a little bit and then we'll give them a nice spray down a little bit later in the day and then we'll actually try to feed them later on tonight. But let's go ahead and get them inside. And Zach thought that there was three pair of these guys and there's no doubt that females get a little bit larger so he's got three kind of larger ones and three kind of smaller ones and they're all the same age so we're just gonna go ahead and see how they like it in there go ahead buddy oh look at how cute it looks it looks absolutely adorable in there oh my gosh that is so freaking awesome and I love that one because it's got that purple hue to it but look at how nice this green one is right here we'll go ahead and put these guys well there you go bud look at that he just jumps on and stuck right to the side how awesome okay go ahead bud Go ahead. Oh, no, not that way. Not that way. Gotta go this way, buddy. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Find your way. Find your way. There you go. There you go. Ah, there you are. Good, perfect. There you go, bud. You go right on that leaf right there. Perfect. And there's one last one, this cool purple one. And there it goes. All right, you can see this one's way over in the corner. This one's over here. This guy's hiding over here. He's cruising over here. This one's on the leaf. These guys look absolutely so happy and amazing. Again, I'm just gonna let them settle in. I'll put on a little light a little bit later that, spray them, try to feed them later. As a matter of fact, Zach told me that most of them will take off of tongs, which how freaking cool is that? These guys are cool. It's gonna be a great display. I absolutely wanna put some other amphibians next door. So it's gonna be really cool. I'm pretty excited about this. Let me know in the comments if you guys are excited too. I have a couple Kluber clutches to pull today. And by the way, the crew is off for the holiday. That's why you're seeing just a lonely me here today. And first up would be a het albino scaleless corn snake. Let's see what she has in there. What do you got, mama? Oh, it's not a bad clutch at all. I do see one little infertile egg in there, but for the most part, this looks like a really nice clutch. Look at that. Let's go ahead and pull this. Good job, mom. You did really good. It's okay. Okay, these guys are good. This one looks good here. And there's definitely a couple little sluggers in here, which is completely fine. I mean, that's just part of breeding colubrids. So, all 
right, mom, we're putting you back, okay? And she looks really well conditioned as well. And that's one of the things that you really want to have happen, is you want the snakes, after they lay eggs, to not just look completely deflated. Because if they're too deflated, number one, they might not lay a second clutch, and number two, they have a hard time rebounding. So I really prefer a little bit smaller clutches and having the female still really back to body weight. So we can try to second clutch them, or if we decide to just give them the rest of the year off, regardless. Let's see what she has here. Two, four, six, seven good eggs, and there were three slugs. So 10 eggs total, seven good, not too bad. And then the next one is actually a black corn that is het for scaleless as well, bred to the same exact thing. Let's see what she has. Okay, pretty similar clutch, maybe a few less eggs, but it looks like there's a couple slugs and a bunch of good eggs, so not too bad. And once again, look at the female here. This, of course, is a black corn snake, or what they would call an aneurythristic corn snake, which is basically just lacking the iridophore. That's why they call it aneurythristic. Now, the iridophore is actually the red pigment, and you can see with these guys, they'll still have a little bit of yellow pigment in it. That's why they're not called azanthic, because if they're lacking the yellow pigment, they're azanthic, and that would actually be a charcoal corn or a type B aneurythristic that is both lacking the red iridophore and the yellow xanthophore. Did I just confuse you? Probably. Regardless, let's look and see how many eggs we got. We got two, four good eggs and three bad eggs. So again, not the best yield today, but that's okay. You have ups and downs. But we'll get plenty of gray fertility from our king snakes, our milk snakes, other corn snakes that aren't het for scaleless. For whatever reason, there's a lot of fertility issues there. And we'll have lots and lots of eggs coming. So I'm not at all worried about it. Regardless, that wraps up our egg pulling for the day. I mentioned last night in the vlog that my friend Carrie King from the band Slayer is in town. And this is their very last tour they're ever going to do. So I'm going to actually leave the shop, go ahead and see this insane concert. Truth be told, I'll probably spend the majority of the time backstage. Uh, it is going to be hot, sweaty, and it's like a five hour concert. I think there's like five bands. So uh, I'm not a huge concert guy, but I think it's pretty cool. So anyways, I'm going to pack up and get out of here. <laughs> All right, guys, just back from the Slayer concert. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really go to many concerts, and I used to listen to kind of heavy metal music and stuff like that. I rarely do anymore, but of course, Carrie is my friend, and when my friends come in town, I'm gonna to always support him, and it's really cool to hang out with the band and just kind of talk reptiles. He's a big reptile guy, so we had an absolutely great time, but it is like two o'clock in the morning, so I'm gonna go ahead, shut the vlog down. I've gotta be up in just a few hours and back to work. I hope that you guys have an absolutely amazing day. Thank you for joining me as always today. Again, tomorrow the crew is back, so we get back to some normalcy. And I think I'm in town for the better part of the next couple weeks, so a lot of things going on at BHB. We're going to have a lot of great fun. Lots of updates coming on zoos and other things, but hey, we'll get into that later on. Again, have an amazing day. Thank you guys for tuning in. You mean the world to me, and I love you guys so much. Do me a couple favors before I go to sleep. Smash that like button. Turn the post notifications on. Make sure you comment and be kind to someone today. I promise. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow.